Hello guys, so I'm back with the video of the BMW for the 30,000 kilometers. I actually hit 30,000 just before New Year's Eve. I'm sorry for the late video because I was out because of the freaking virus. And I just didn't have the time after, after that. So I am able to record the video uh, today. I am here in the south of Lima, here on the I have a, like a clubhouse here at the, at the beach. The beach is down there, as you can see that. So I came to this location to record a video. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about some things uh, to consider uh, at 30,000 or maybe at 25-ish thousand, things you have to check out and to monitor, especially on the things that wear, such as the chain, uh, the tire, uh the fork and some other minor things okay so at the 30,000 maintenance it's just the minor one which is basically the oil of the motor and you know to check for the computer for updates and you know some minor stuff but the thing that i was missing to do uh, was the uh oil of the fork actually at 25 26,000. I was feeling the front end of the bike a little bit loose, especially when cornering at low speeds on rough terrain. It was like a weird feeling, you know, like I was uh, having like a flat tire. I was thinking, hey, what is this? It just, it just was just very strange. So it turns out that I was uh, much uh, in a much needed uh, change of the oil of the fork. Actually, I was supposed to do that 20,000. But for some reason, uh, the dealer didn't tell me, you know. At 20,000, they just did the oil change um, to change the spark plugs and to check the valve clearance. And that's it. They should have also changed the oil for, but, you know, they didn't tell me. So that's something you have to consider, especially if you do off-road like I did. You know, I do a lot of off-road, so maybe that's why the, uh, there's a lot of impact on, on the fork. After I did the oil change of the fork, you know, it was like a completely new fork, you know, diff a, a way better feeling of the suspension and of the handling of the bike. So I highly co uh, recommend you uh, to change the fork oil at 20,000. Hey guys, a problem that I had with the bike was related to the engine. I was getting really worried because, you know, the engine is a vital part of the bike. Um, compared to, like I said before, I had an issue with the mirror here of the glass getting loose. You know, that's just cosmetic stuff. But something that happened to the engine got me really worried. What happened uh, here, this gasket for the engine valve cover was getting wet of oil. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't really a leak. So it wasn't, you know, leaking oil like crazy, but it was getting all this part wet. And because it was wet, it was really uh, getting dirt, you know, stuck in there. I went to a dealer and they actually told me this is a common issue on this motor. My suspicions is that when they uh, opened this for the 20,000 to change the um, spark plugs and to check uh, the valve clearance, maybe when they put it back, they didn't put it as it's supposed, it was supposed to be. You know, they didn't go, they didn't get a good seal around. So they told me that that happened to many other bikes and they, of course, changed it under warrant. After that, you know, it's been you know, uh, clean, no leaks at all, nothing all around. I just checked that. I always check my bag, you know, for for stuff like that. Uh, something that happened uh, that I'm, I'm not sure if it's related to that leak was of the measurement of the dipstick. If you check your manual, your oil should be in between the high and the low side mark. It never should be on the high side, you know, like it, it uh, should be by common sense. The manual says should be in between the two. Uh, before the 30,000 service and before I did the change of um, the gasket, I was getting a reading on the low side of the mark. I was getting a little bit worried about that because I'm, I wasn't sure if the engine, if the engine was consuming oil through, you know, the ring of the piston, or maybe the the valves. But the dealer told me um, if it's on the low side, it's still safe. 
but the recommendation that the oil should be in between the two, just in case. Uh, so I'm not sure if, if I was getting that low reading because of that leak. Like I said, it wasn't really a leak, it just was getting wet. So I'm, I don't think that the oil might be escaping all through here, but maybe it was getting evaporated through that uh, uh, failure of the gasket, who knows? So I still have to check the oil right now. Um, the bike, it's about 32,000. So it's been 2,000 since the, since the last service. I want to, I am curious to check if the oil has dropped or not. Okay. So after that, uh, the bike has been really great. There hasn't been any other major problem or issue. Okay, guys, uh, so I want to talk to you about the tires. Uh, I've talked to some friends and they usually go through two tires on the back and then one in the front. But to me, it happened the opposite. Uh, I just changed that about maybe 7,000 kilometers ago. This is a brand new tire, as you can see. The thread, it's almost like maybe 90% now because I think, I believe I changed this at 25, 26,000. But the back is still from, from, from when the bike was new. So that's crazy. I don't know why it lasts so long. Let me check that. As you can see, there's still little uh, thread left. I would say maybe it's, it's got 20% left, something like this. But you have to consider this tire is about 32,000 kilometers old. So I don't know why to me it lasts more than the front compared to some buddies that they told me uh, they changed, you know, first the back one and the last one lasts more. So that's something to consider. I think it depends on the on your driving style. I don't usually take it too hard on the accelerator and I uh, don't rush, you know, the engine uh, like a race, uh, race, race bike. You know, I just go really easy on it. So maybe that's why the tire, the rear tire lasts so long. And also that has to do with the change as well. Because I don't go that hard on the bike, the chain is still good at 32,000 kilometers. As you can see, uh, you have to check for the teeth of this sprocket. I mean, it's still got like a flat head. It's not that pointy yet. And the front one, let me get in there. Let's see, we can see that. Let's check that. It's a little dark, but you know, it's still good. The front sprocket is still good. And the tire, I'm sorry, the chain doesn't look that uh, stretched. As you can see, it looks in great shape. But uh, my friends told me that I might be close to change that because it's been 32,000 kilometers. Maybe at, at 40,000, I may, I may have to change this. Um, something that I've been doing for the past 30,000 kilometers, it's always loop, well, clean and loop the chain every week almost i clean i wash my bike every week and of course i clean and loop the chain also i check for the gap of the of the tension like it, like it says here i always keep it at 30 or 35 millimeters the the, the slack of the chain so you have to always check that and of course don't you know don't push your bike too hard but if because if you do hard accelerations or you push it hard, that's gonna put some stress on your chain, okay? So uh, I'm not sure yet if I should go for the OEM one because to me it looks that it lasts really good. Like I said, it's been 32,000 kilometers, so I may go again for the OEM one, or maybe I go for an aftermarket one, which is the DIT, DID chain, the Japanese brand. I've been looking at one that has uh, the gold links here, these ones. So that might be like a you know nice change to have a gold uh, chain, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm still considering comparing prices, you know. If the OEM one is not that expensive, I may go again for the OEM one because it lasted a lot, you know. It's, it's gonna maybe get at 40, 40,000 easily. Okay guys, so some other things to consider for maintenance of the bike. It's here on the brake lever. Uh, at some point I was feeling the brake not that smooth when pushing here. Uh, 
I was feeling like it stops through uh, pushing the lever like this. And as you can see, there's a, like a sound. The reason is that you have to loop here uh, this part, this little piston there. It gets really dirt, dirt in there. Uh, it gets dry as well. And I, at first I was thinking I was having like a bad brake, uh, a master cylinder. But it turns out that it's really, uh, you have to clean this part and to lube it. So you have a really smooth uh, brake lever. Also, another thing that I noticed here was uh, I was getting a little uh, bubbles getting out of this cover for the reservoir. And I just had to, you know, uh, uh, make like an eighth of a turn for the bolt. Maybe when they change uh, the the fluid at 20,000 kilometers, they didn't uh, tighten too much or maybe got loose over time. That happened, I believe, at 28,000. So I just basically turned it like an eighth of, of a turn and it was uh, getting a good seal. So you have to check, keep an eye on this at you don't get any uh, bubbles coming out when you uh, push your brake lever because you might get dirt inside or contamination. So check that, always have it in mind. Uh, that's it, you know. Uh, there hasn't been any other problem with the bike, you know, mechanically. It's been great. Uh, the shifter, the transmission, all good until now. Um, I have fallen a uh, few times now with the bike, you know, stupid falls, you know, uh, because you lose your equilibrium, you know, maybe you get scared or you have like uh, a really slick terrain that you don't get any traction. So really minor falls. And uh, let me tell you that the Givi crash bars has been great. I just recently uh, painted the bars. I, I got it uh, sandblasted and painted. But when I fell recent, recently, it hit on this part, as you can see. So the Gibby ones are really great. I highly high re recommend that. Uh, also, I have fallen and hit on this back part. And because of uh, this uh, Gibby, uh the covers for the, for the luggage, has protected my exhaust and of course the whole bike on this back on this uh, back side. As you can see, here's the mark where I fell. Here's a mark and here's another mark. So, like I said on one video, this is not only for luggage but also to protect your rear bike. And of course, the fuel gallon is always useful. So you have it there uh, just in case when you do long trips. Uh, yeah, guys, that's it. The bike has been great. I'm really, really happy with this. I have, until now, I don't see the need to change for another bike. You know, uh, I'm really happy with this. The bike performs really well for, for what it is, even though it's not that powerful because it's only 77 uh, horsepower. But to me, uh, I only ride alone. I don't take any passengers. It's fine. Maybe if you like to take passengers, the power might be a little bit limited. But if you ride alone, and if you weigh like like I do like, at around 74 kilos, you should be fine. Okay, guys. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, of course, I'm going to keep riding. I'm going to keep uh, putting kilometers on this bike. Many, 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 many more. And of course, I'll keep you updated on any other things that happen to me so you guys are aware of this and know how to handle this and know what to do thank you